Hi, welcome back for another video. This is the second video in a series that I'm gonna be dedicating to building a split top Rubo bench. The first video dealt with milling lumber and lumber selection. So if you haven't seen that one, I'll leave a link down in the description below. This video is gonna look after the base. So everything basically from the top down with the exception of the leg vise and the tail vise because I'll make separate videos on those ones. But for now, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of the future videos on this build. And let's get right into it because I'm sure you wanna know how to build one of these things. All woodworking projects begin by selecting your lumber and then starting to break down and mill it to rough dimensions. So right here, I've got some eight quarter maple for the base of the Rubo bench. And I'm just using the bandsaw to get close to a rough width, probably about a quarter of an inch wider than what I really need because as these boards get cut and acclimate again to my shop, they're gonna actually start to move and bow and twist a little bit. So keep them a little bit over width. When I was cross cutting all the different boards to a rough length, I just simply used a circular saw. You don't have to be too precise whatsoever. And when I was cutting them to their rough lengths, I did allow a bit of extra material on each end just to account for some planar snipe. We all know that most planers give about three or four inches of planar snipe, so I definitely just kept all of these pieces a little bit long to account for that. So the next step that I want to work on is these short rails. And what I've done is I've marked four and a half inches from the one edge. They need to be four and a quarter inches wide. So I'm gonna save this little piece that's, you know, maybe inch and a half square for maybe cutting boards or something, but I might as well not mill it down and waste material. The short rails are the pieces that are actually gonna be in this position on the bench right here and up underneath. You can see it a little bit easier here where you've got the end of the uh, base of the bench construction, short rails, top and bottom on each end uh, like this. Okay, so we're gonna mill those up right now wasting as little material as possible in the process. I've got the short rails for the Rubo bench face jointed, edge jointed, ripped to a rough width. Now we'll bring the thickness down to a rough thickness. Their final thickness is supposed to be one and three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna bring it down to one and seven eighths and then let it reacclimate to my shop a little bit for a few days before bringing it down to that final one and three quarter inch thickness. The legs for the Rubo bench are actually quite thick. They're three and a half inches thick. So you actually need to laminate two pieces of the eight quarter soft maple in order to make them the proper thickness. And the way that I like to do that is by incorporating some brad nails into the inside faces of these laminations, just so that when you're gluing them together, they don't slip and slide all over the place and misalign. So I'm just gonna put a brad nail on the diagonal corners of one face, nip them off with a pair of wire cutters, apply my glue, get the clamps on, and laminate these big, thick, beefy legs all together. So pretty simple, easy trick to use. I hope you find it useful. When you do apply the glue for these laminations for the legs, don't be skimpy with the glue. Make sure you get lots of glue on there. I like to spread it around with a roller. It gives me nice even coverage, but you actually don't wanna overdo it with the glue because if you do, you'll just waste the glue and you'll have a lot of squeeze out and a lot of cleanup to actually deal with after the fact. So just make sure that you get enough on there so when you bring your clamps together, the glue squeezes out with a nice even bead all the way around and you should be good. When you do apply the clamps, in my experience, I've had good luck starting with the center clamp and working out. So that just kind of results in a little less creep or movement, even though we put those brad nails in there. What I'm gonna do next is re-mill them. They're just milled to rough thickness and width, but 
I wanted them to acclimate to the shop a little bit more over the last few days or a week. So they're not perfectly straight, but they will be after one more pass on the jointer and through the thickness planer. So the first thing we're going to lay out on these legs is going to be the tenon on the tops and they're actually one inch high or one inch long. And this 4R ruler that I bought with all these increments on it, it actually has little indentations. I haven't had this that long, so you can actually get the cutter of your marking gauge right in there and slide it right up. So you can get it really darn accurate. In order to mark out the shoulders on these legs, what I like to do is make several light passes on these uh, hard pieces of uh, maple. So keeping that fence, using my index finger tight against the uh, curved side of the, the fence here on the marking gauge and just making a few passes a little heavier and heavier so that we can slowly get a very defined mark there that we can work up to. This leg has some awesome grain on it. This one's gonna go right on the front of the bench where I see it all the time because I really love this one piece of uh, wood that went into this leg. So in order to not make mistakes, I like to use the mechanical pencil and just darken those marking gauge lines. If you use your finger against the end of the workpiece, get the tip right in the line, very easy to follow that marking gauge line that you've put onto the workpiece. And we know we're gonna remove all of this, so we might as well just darken it out so we know that's all gonna be waste. And same over here. In an effort to not make any mistakes, the plans actually label all of the legs as the back left, and then it has left, right, and the back and the fronts on them as if you were standing on the front of the bench here. So I went ahead and marked all the legs like this so that I know which leg goes in which corner of the bench going forward so that we don't make any mistakes. Making the tenons on the tops of the legs is actually very straightforward in comparison to doing all the mortises on the base of the Rubo bench. The tops of the legs, you just have to use one marking gauge set at one inch, super easy. But when you're doing the 12 mortises for the legs, you need to keep track of where they all are because the positions of the short rails and the long rails are not necessarily at the same measurements from the edges of the legs. So I found it very helpful to actually have two marking gauges when I was doing this so that I could have different ones set to different measurements and I left them that way the whole time that I marked the entire base so that I didn't have any chance of an error being made by changing one and having to reset it to the same measurement again. I always try to do things in such a way that I won't make a mistake so once I had the mortise ends and the sides completely marked out I would just trace around them with a pencil and then darken in the middle so that I knew exactly where all the waste material was going to end up being. Now, I'm not going to show you every single one of these 12 mortises being marked out, but just follow the plans and make sure you follow all the measurements exactly so that you can actually have a nice, accurate base once you're all finished. I'm all set up with the drill press to drill the holes for the drawbore pegs that are gonna hold the rails to the legs. And I'm gonna drill those before I actually create the mortises because I don't wanna drill through the mortises after they've been done and get any blowout uh, damaging the inside surface of the mortise. So let's drill these holes out. The next step is drilling the very long holes for the knockdown hardware for the bench. And it's gonna be a little bit tricky because the leg is actually wider than or thicker than the travel on the drill press. I've got three inches of travel and this is five and a quarter. So first we're gonna drill the counter bore which is one and one eighth of an inch in diameter for the head of the bolt. Then we're gonna switch out the bit and drill as far as we can 
for the half inch hole that's going to be for the shaft of the bolt. And then we're going to flip the uh, leg over and drill from the other side. And I've already went ahead and marked a very precise location for where the tip of the bit actually has to be. And I'm going to keep my fence located in the same place throughout the entire process so that I can also get it the same distance from the edge of the workpiece or the leg. So the bolt that actually is used for the knockdown hardware is exactly a half inch in diameter and the holes when you drill them from both sides almost line up perfectly but not quite so the bolt won't actually go through so we're just going to run the half inch bit from the, the brace through here just to complete things and clean out that hole a little bit. This is actually my grandfather's brace and bit and it probably hasn't been used in 80 years. One of these days I'll clean it up and get it working better, but for right now, I kinda wanna get this project done. The front right leg has several holes drilled through it. There's three that are three quarters of an inch in diameter that are going to be for storing holdfasts or potentially even for putting a peg in or using the holdfast in to be able to hold a workpiece uh, vertically along the front edge of the bench. But there's also a larger diameter hole on the top and that one's actually used so that you can fit your finger up inside of it to raise one of the bench dogs on the top of the bench and it raises the one closest to the tail vise and it's probably going to be the one that's used the most. All right, it's time to cut the mortises for the legs on this Rubo bench and I've got the fence on the mortiser set up 9 16 of an inch from the edge and these mortises are going to be uh, 5 8 of an inch wide. I don't have a mortiser that can handle a bit that big so we're going to do a couple passes with a 3 8 inch bit. I usually have really good luck using my bench top mortiser, but for some reason on this project, it just wasn't going very well. I wasn't getting very smooth sidewalls on these mortises, so I ended up clamping a block to the leg and just using a really sharp chisel to pare away the sides to get a nice smooth surface so that when I go and make the tenons, I had a really nice smooth surface for a nice solid connection. So the next thing to mark out is the tenons on the lower rails and I want to just point out that I've chosen this particular piece for the rail uh, that I'm going to be seeing most often on the right end of the bench where the tail vise is because of some of the character in here with some of this wormhole uh, area. Let's mark out these tenons. They're very straightforward. They're two inches in and I'm going to mark it at two inches all the way around. Just a few really light passes just to deepen that shoulder line slowly as we do that. In order to make the tenons on the rails as efficiently as possible, I use as wide of a dado stack as I can. And once I've got it tightened down, I do spin it by hand just to make sure that it's not fluttering and just to make sure that it runs true. Here I'm setting the fence on the table saw up so that I can cut the tenons on these rails and I'm using a stop lock so that I don't pinch the workpiece up against the actual fence on the table saw. This is one of the safest practices you can use when you're doing a tenon like this with the miter gauge. I actually set my stop block up just slightly less than two inches so that I'd be able to finish the shoulder edge lines with some hand tools like chisels. I did that so that I would make sure I had a nice crisp line all the way around because sometimes with a dado stack or a table saw blade you do get fuzzy edges or some tear out if your blade's not perfectly sharp and clean. I also didn't set the height of the dado stack all the way up to where it needed to be to make the tenons their final thickness. I prefer to do the final fitting with hand tools like a router plane, so I actually set the height of the dado stack just a little bit lower than what it needed to be, essentially making those tenons thicker or fatter than what's going to be required. 
This thicker rail is the lower front rail. It's the one that the sliding dead man is actually going to run back and forth on. So it needs to have a little bit of a triangular piece on the top of it that the sliding dead man can slide back and forth on without falling off. Next is going to be fitting the tenon rails into the legs. They don't quite line up. I rough did the tenons with a dado stack on the table saw, kind of doing a cross cut type of a technique. It looks like I need to probably just shave off a little bit more on the uh, bottom of the tenon and probably just a tiny bit on the top once I get to that point. But I'll take more off the bottom than the top. That way if the uh, rail ends up being proud of the outside surface of the leg, I can just plane the rail off nice and flush. Here I'm just using a really sharp chisel to establish a really crisp shoulder line all the way around the rail so that we get a nice crisp really clean look so that it flushes up and closes the joint really nicely once it's all drawboard together. Before I use the router plane to adjust the thickness of the tenon cheeks, I actually like to use a block plane just to knock off or chamfer the ends of the tenons just so they go into the mortises easier. And similarly, I use a chisel along the sides or the corners of the tenons because I figure if I get any chip out, I'll be able to actually take that off a little bit with the router plane and have a much nicer, flatter, more consistent surface once I actually adjust the cheeks with the router plane. After you've taken some time to actually get the fit just right, you can do a little bit of a trial fit and you can check it for how square it is. And as you can see right here, we are pretty square. The really thick tops are fastened using these really long lag bolts up through the bottom and into the bottom of the top. So we need to make some through holes through these top rails in order for those to pass through. Because the rails are actually wider than the travel on my drill press, I needed to drill from both sides and the holes had to line up so they met perfectly so that the bolts could actually go through. So I used a fence on my drill press as well as a stop lock that the tendon butted up against so that when I drilled I would get a perfectly aligned hole from one side all the way through to the other. Here I'm working on completing some of the holes for the knockdown hardware and I already drilled through the leg but you need to have a very long drill bit in order to drill through the leg and into the tenon and I ended up buying a long bit online to actually do this because I didn't have one in my set that was anywhere as close to long enough to do this. But what you want to do is make sure that you're keeping the drill nice and level as well as perpendicular uh, sideways as you'll see here so that you can get this hole as straight as possible into that tenon. Because we're working with really long bolts and holes, I found it pretty useful to do a few trial fits here and there just to make sure the bolts would actually go all the way in freely and that they weren't really causing any friction or binding whatsoever. One of the trickiest steps with the knockdown hardware is figuring out where to exactly drill the hole for the barrel nut. It's actually more simple than what it may seem. You just have to insert the bolt into the hole that you've bored and use the sides of the bolt along with a ruler to draw some lines or some projections for where the sides of the bolt are actually going to be located inside that rail. From there, you just have to locate the center of those two lines and line it up with where you need to drill the hole for that barrel nut. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Just drill the hole deep enough so that the barrel nut can go all the way in and the bolt can engage. Do a little bit of a test trial fit to make sure that it can actually tighten into the barrel nut and you're all set. The base of the bench has a shelf that sits on all the lower rails, but it's supported by some really narrow ledgers that fit into some shallow dados all the way around the perimeter of the lower rails. So here I'm just cutting those little dados using a dado stack in the table saw and I ran all of them at the same time just to make sure that they all line up perfectly at the same distance from the top of every single rail. When you do make the shelf ledgers you do have to make a little bit of a cutout to allow them to fit around the barrel nuts on the rails. This is the front right leg of the Rubo bench and these are the holes for the hold fasts and then there's an access hole for a bench dog up here but I want to chamfer around the perimeter of these hold fast holes just so they don't break out and chip out.
The short rails are attached to the legs using draw bores and the plans call for 3 8 inch dowels. I chose to make my own. I actually made a dowel making jig in a previous video. I'll link it up top here. If you're not familiar with draw boring, I did make a video on that as well, so I'll leave a link up top. But basically it's quite simple. You just need to drill an offsetting hole in the tenon of the rail by about maybe a 32nd or maybe a sixteenth of an inch so that when you hammer in the dowel it actually pulls the joint together tight and then you don't have to use any clamps whatsoever. There's a couple different ways that you can actually locate where you're supposed to drill the hole. You can use a pencil like I did or what some people do is actually use a brad point bit and in this case they would use a 3 8 inch diameter brad point bit in order to put it into the hole of the leg and you just drop it in and push it into the tenon so that you know exactly where the center of that hole is. And then you just disassemble the joint and drill the hole slightly towards the shoulder of that tenon by about a 32nd or maybe a 16th of an inch. Any more than that and the dowel probably won't go through and it'll probably break. Go ahead and drill your offset holes, make yourself some approximate length dowels, hammer them home and Bada boom, bada bing, you've got some draw bore pegged legs and rails. If you have any questions about this particular video or anything that you want me to include in the future videos, be sure to leave me a comment down below so that I can try to put that into the next few videos. But make sure to subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up because you don't want to miss any of the future videos on the split top rubo bench. That's about all I've got for you today. So until next time, go build something beautiful.